The INFJ personality type is often characterized with a high sense of empathy and benevolence, a desire to help other people. Do you feel like you want to do good in the world, that you want to contribute somehow, that you want to give of yourself or put your mark on the world in some way? Often INFJs share this strong tendency towards wanting to help better the world somehow. However, many INFJs struggle with a problem. They find it hard to ask for help. Do you find it easy to ask people for if you need something? Do you find it easy to collaborate with other people? Are you willing to let other people in to your life to work with you towards doing something good? Or have you decided that you want to help the world all on your own? When you score high in introversion and judging and feeling, typically this makes you inclined towards independence, but also charitability. You want to contribute, but you want to do it your own way. There is a desire here for originality. It has to be the way you want it to be. You want to help people in your own way. You want to find your own unique style of contributing to and giving to others, but you also want to do it on your own. Typically, you want to withdraw from other people so that you can work on a method or an idea or a theory or some kind of skill that you can use to make the world a better place. The problem here is that often when we avoid and withdraw from other people, we also struggle to understand what it is that other people need and what other people benefit from. Often you might draw conclusions based on your own sense of sixth sense or intuition about what you think other people feel or what you think other people need and what you think is best for the world. It can feel as if other people are unreliable. Other people don't know what they want. Other people don't know what they need and other people are unreliable in their help and in their support. Often INFJs and their struggle to collaborate with other people is rooted in negative experiences when you grow up. Many INFJs can point to examples when they felt that they were betrayed by other people or let down by others, when they had high expectations or when they wanted to connect with somebody or wanted to connect or work or collaborate with somebody, but they found that the other person ultimately fell short. They didn't really participate in the way they had hoped, they didn't really contribute in the way they wanted to. Or when they work towards other people or towards doing something good for the world, they find that other people are often contradictory in their needs. One day a person says they want one thing and another day it's the other thing and that makes you wonder what is it they really want, right? At the same time, learning to collaborate with other people is essential to really understanding what it is that you can do for the world and how it is that you can be useful. Still, the INFJ should always start in learning to understand what it is that they uniquely can contribute. Your high level of independence and your desire to tendency towards going inside and thinking about what it is that you can do, that allows you to connect with your own purpose and it will help you in the process to individuation. It will help you understand yourself better and it will help you understand what it is that you can do for the world. Question number two is, how do I use and apply this to make the world a better place? What do I do with all these ideas and theories and unique hobbies and interests? And how do I channel that towards some kind of charitable or positive cause for the world? Can you think of some kind of job or some kind of quest or some kind of activity or project that would allow you to channel your interests and your hobbies and your passions towards a positive cause. To answer that question, this is where you need to start opening up to and letting other people in. The only way to know how you can contribute to the world is to ask other people what it is that they need, right? Yeah, there is a room to introspect and to process and think about what it is that other people want, but ultimately you want to trust other people to know themselves best. You want to make sure that you're not looking for a sheet code to hack into the mind of other people. A lot of people who come into the MTI do so with this thirst of finding a theory they can use to instinctively know anyone's personality and wants and needs and values and passions 
just by looking at the person. Yeah, the hope is that you will never have to talk to another person again. You'll just understand them magically and you'll never need to ask them any questions. You'll never need to have any uncertainty. You'll always know exactly how other people think and you can just do this in your own mind without dealing with other people, without misunderstandings, without conflicts, without uncertainties, without ambiguities, right? But often the bonds that we shape with other people are true questions and true misunderstandings and true ambivalent situations. And often, even if you have an idea about what it is another person wants, and even if that idea is better or close to what the other person wants, you'll still want to confirm it with the other person. So you might want to say, I'm starting to pick up on this feeling, or I'm starting to feel that way, or I'm starting to notice this in you. Is that correct? Or is that really how you feel? Or how do you feel, think about this, right? Giving other people a chance to think for themselves what it is that they feel and what it is that they want gives another person their sense of agency, right? And here, what you want to avoid is letting your desire for control and responsibility thwart other people's sense of agency. It's very easy to find yourself thinking that you could know better, that you could control other people, that you could decide for other people how they should feel, what they should want, what they should do. But this is only going to set you up for disappointment because people are going to have to figure that out themselves. You can help guide them in that process and often that's one way that INFJs can contribute towards personal growth and development, but you can't take over that process and do that process for the other person. Similarly to a mentor showing up in a fantasy story, your story as a mentor would not be to tell the hero where they should go and what they should do. Your role is simply to facilitate their process, to walk with them, to help them have a wall or another person they can discuss with and express themselves towards and to process their thoughts with. Your goal is not to step in, take over the sword and go and slay the dragon for them. <laughs> That's not going to work, right? So think about what it is that you can do to make sure that your desire to care for other people and your independence doesn't stretch into other people's domains. Because ultimately there's nothing wrong with being an independent soul. And while INFJs often find themselves drawn to this lone wolf archetype, it's important to make sure that the independence that you hold is an independence for yourself, not an independence over other people, right? So here, that's where your boundaries have to go. It has to start with, you know, making sure that you know, for you, independence should mean things like mean being able to take care of yourself, being able to provide for yourself, being able to understand your own needs and to give yourself what you want. That's healthy independence for an INFJ, understanding what it is that you want and who you are and learning to walk and follow those ideas and ideals to your heart, right? Authentically and fully committing to yourself. But what you want to avoid is those moments where it feels like, you know, other people don't know themselves. They need me to step in and figure it out and tell them what to do. Other people don't know who they are. I need to go and tell them who they are so that they will know. Other people are starting to disappoint me or not living up to my expectations. I should take over and do it for them because they can't be trusted to do it for themselves. Really recognizing that a lot of the time, as an INFJ, you have to consider and you have to confront trust issues in your life. You have to consider times when other people said things that didn't line up with how you think they feel, you know? Because often INFJs, they're very skilled at reading people, very skilled at observing human behavior, understanding tone, recognizing that, yes, other people will sometimes not always tell the full truth. They're not always ready to tell you something that they might be feeling. They need time to understand what it is that they are feeling themselves. Even if you know what they are feeling, they need time and they need patience and they need a solid grip. Luckily, INFJs, you have a lot of patience and you can learn to understand and embrace and accept that this is just a part of the contradictory experience that it is to be human. People do confu get confused. People don't always understand themselves. People do get lost in transmission sometimes. And you, as an INFJ, have an opportunity here to help, but be careful with how you offer that help and make sure that your help is wanted in the first place. For example, ask them if they would need help understanding something or if they would need to vent or if they need to talk about something and let them come to you because that's going to make a person a lot more receptive to your unique expertise. And this is how you as an INFJ can 
uniquely contribute towards personal growth and personal development across a collective universal scale. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.